friends, welcome back to my channel. So this week we are going to be talking about pre-planning and how to go about designing a spread each week in your planner. I've had a few questions wanting to know how I go about this process as far as how I pull a cohesive theme each week for my spreads. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I actually pre-planned for last week's plan with me and discuss some ideas and some tips to hopefully help you guys with your own pre-planning in your own planners. To begin, I am planning this week's spread using a sticker book as my jumping off point. I personally wanted to use my horizontal layout sticker book that you see here this week because I haven't given it any love and so I started out going into that sticker book and looking for stickers that I liked and thought were interesting. I pulled that page that you see there and am now looking for some florals that coincide with those stickers from other sticker books. And this is just a way for me to kind of figure out what I want to use for decor in my theme. So what you see me pulling there is the floral sticker book or the flower sticker book and just trying to see if that works. And I think in the end I'm going to try and use the botanical sticker book for my floral decor and pull stickers from that. If you are starting your theme, that is a great place to start. If you have a specific book like you just purchased and you really wanted to use, that's a great place to start. Some other ideas for starting are color scheme. If you are just in a mood for a certain color scheme or if you see one sticker in particular that has a color that you like, trying to build upon that and create a color scheme that is cohesive, that is a way to go about things. Another way to do it is to actually get inspiration from other planner babes or from other spreads that you've seen in the past or saved on Pinterest or whatever you have as far as your inspiration. It doesn't even have to be that. It could be any kind of inspiration, a piece of art that you've looked at. But yeah, taking inspiration from something else and then working that into a theme. Another option is seasonal or like holidays. So in fall, obviously there's a lot of fall related spreads. There's, you know, Christmas or Easter or Independence Day for holidays. So looking forward into the week and looking at what holidays might work for you or if it's a specific season that you want to kind of gear your theme towards, that's another way to come up with an idea for a spread. There's also mood and feels. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're in a mood for something that uh, reflects how you're feeling. So if you you know, are really happy, you know, that you're going to get a promotion next week and you just want to have those bright bubbly vibes, look there. Or, you know, like if you're doing a spread that is geared towards some kind of activity, that might also play into how the colors and the stickers that you pull are themed. Next is maybe a specific activity. So I started to mention that before, but so an activity in regards to an event or a trip or even some type of sporting outing or whatever you're, you're doing, say you're going snowboarding or you're going to go watch a football game or you're taking a road trip, going to Disneyland, whatever that may be, there's another few ideas that you could pull into your theme just related to your life, related to you, personal to you, but also creates a jumping off point for a theme. So those are more, you know, uh, concrete items, but there's also whether or not you're busy, more functional items. If you work and you know you have a lot of work coming up in the following week and will need more space in your planner, keeping that in mind, or if, um, you know, it's going to be a, a vacation week and the feels are going to be different. You know, you, maybe you're not going anywhere. It's a staycation, but you know you're not going to need all 
the stickers on there to help you be functional, then you can keep that as a jumping off point as well for your theme. And finally, there's the no plan plan where you just don't really have an idea what you want to do and you just start looking through your stickers and look for inspiration from whatever jumps out at you. Even if you're not using stickers, maybe you're using scrapbook paper or something to add some color and some variety. That's a way. Washi tape is another way, you know, just no plan. Just kind of look at your stash, see if anything, you know, sparks interest and then take it from there. Okay, so that's kind of where to start. And then some ways to go about pulling your theme together. Start with some tools that you'll need. Right now you see me, I'm pulling stickers and actually laying them down on wax paper so that I can move them around my spread without the stickers having issues being stuck to the paper. When you're developing a theme and you really don't have a direction that you wanna go, it makes it really easy for you to shift things around, change your mind, figure out what feels right, find balance, all those good things. So wax paper is a great way to do that. And I don't know if you just saw me pull off a clear sheet on that sticker sheet there, but another way is using empty sticker sheets. So if you pretty much have the same kind of flow or layout each week and you know that it's not gonna be that hard for you to just take stickers and lay them down, you kinda know where things would go, then sticker sheets work really well. So you just use an empty one like you see me uh, putting the sticker on there. And so it's kind of the same thing as the wax paper. It's a, a holding place for your stickers where they're not gonna get stuck down permanently. And then you can just grab all of the colors and the themes and the stickers that you think you're gonna need for that week, put them on a couple sticker sheets, and then develop your theme after you've gone through all your sticker books and collected all of the stickers that you know you'll need. Both of those ways are great, but some people just like to look through sticker books and then just lay things down, and that's great too. You can do it that way. It just makes it a little bit, you have to be a little bit more conscious of pulling the right colors and themes as you go so it doesn't become too cluttered or mismatched with your theme. You just gotta kinda keep it all in mind what you're trying to achieve and then make sure that you're going towards that goal as you pull stickers. Next, let's talk about what you should be looking for when you're looking for stickers in your book. There are obviously lots and different kinds in the Happy Planner sticker books, um, but you don't have to use Happy Planner stickers. You know, Erin Condren has stickers. So many shops have stickers. Uh, there's also, you know, if you go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's here in the United States, there's, you know, just stickers for card making or at Walmart, you know, the, the stickers that you can use for decor. And again, it doesn't always have to be stickers. It can be scrapbook paper, washi. Just your pen sometimes works, you know, using highlighters for color and pen. All of that can create a cohesive theme, depending on how you like to plan. Since my planning style is very sticker-based, we're gonna kind of focus more on that, since if you're watching this channel, you probably are into that. But you know, just know that that's not the only way to plan, and there's always options. I'm just gonna kind of explain it more for pulling specific type of stickers out when you're developing a theme with stickers. Things that I look for for my horizontal spreads are, are three individual things. I'm always looking for decor. So what is going to be the pretty for the spread? What am I gonna be looking at as far as that brings me joy, that makes the spread look you know, pretty to look at? If it's a color scheme, for example, you might be pulling stickers, say for like a rainbow theme, you, you know, you're gonna want your stickers to be all a certain color. So that's really gonna be the pretty of your theme. So just pulling the, that color out and making sure that the colors work well together as far as the colors you're pulling. If it's more decor related, like you're seeing me pull out here where the florals are the basis of the theme, looking for that as decor. 
there is, you know, the quote. Sometimes quotes can hold an entire spread together. So that's an awesome heavy decor item that you can use. There's shapes, just individual shapes like circle stickers, just a bunch of circle stickers, maybe clumped together or doing some kind of shape throughout your spread, like a serpentine or like the wreath spread I did back in fall, just kind of making a shape out of it. Say I've done a couple in the past that were like food stickers and you know, like popsicles or ice cream and I just used those and, and that was the decor of the spread. So there's that. There's also washi. Washi could also be a, a great decor theme, bringing in pattern, bringing in color. So all of those things can be considered decor items. Just depends on what your theme is. And then for me, I, and I mentioned this in many videos as far as uh, instructional videos on how to use your planner. I like to have focus boxes each day, which is kind of like a highlight for the day and then checklists, which is your to-dos for the day. That's me personally. Not everybody needs all of that. Sometimes you just need the checklist or sometimes you just do one or two things a day and you could just write that in any way in a box or in a list form, however you want to do it. Those are the things I'm always looking for. So while you're pulling your theme, you need to be thinking about, okay, what is my theme? So I'm going to use this as an example. My theme from here is the florals are my decor. I'm pulling in quotes as well as kind of an alternate decor and my color scheme, which is the purple and the teal with black. So everything that I'm going to be looking for is going to be with those. And um, I would need checklists and focus boxes for each day. Once you kind of got the idea of what you're doing for your theme, you want to go into your books and start looking for things within your color scheme or within your theme that work for your functional day. I'm looking here for focus boxes. I was working with colorful boxes, looking at bringing in some more of the black since I had limited amount of the purple and the green available to me. And then just trying to make sure I had what I needed for each day. So I also was working with bulleted lists, um, as you can see, as well as some list banner type lists there for my daily checkoffs of to do's. And then a few other focus boxes in the theme that were available in the horizontal sticker book. So that's kind of what I have in mind when I'm thinking of it. And I pulled those flowers in particular for this design because of that Happy Plans big purple box at the bottom has a pattern in its border that is, I believe, the same flowers that you see there. So that was a jumping off point. That purple box that I found in the horizontal started everything and then I started to pull things together from there. Those are three things that I would suggest looking for. There are occasions where you'll need something aside from maybe checklists or focus boxes. Maybe you need, you know, a really long weekly to-do list that you like to put um, in the middle of your spread or on the sidebar or whatever your style of layout is. So if you know that you need that long weekly to-do list every week, make sure you pull that in your theme or look for stickers you really like to use. If you have like a day where you do a lot of chores and you like those stickers that are very specific for your chores, so like if it says laundry, it's a little laundry basket or take out the trash, has a little trash can, look for those as well and make sure that they're in your theme so that everything feels cohesive. And if you can't find them in your theme, think about whether or not you really need them or how else you might be able to denote those tasks with different stickers. Okay, so when you're pulling for stickers, we talked about what kind of things to start looking for and kind of how to build out your spread. And everybody's going to be different. Just some ideas there for you guys. You also need to think about how full you want your spread to be. Do you want it to be more functional? If you need a lot of space because you keep track of a lot of things each day and you divide up your day and you have your kids' schedules on there as well as your own schedule and some work events and, and all everything's just kind of in there and so you need like every inch of space. Well be mindful of that when you pull your theme. 
Also, if you really don't have a lot going on, but you really want something pretty to look at, so you make sure that you're using your planner every day and you get in there, keep that in mind. Then, you know, put the focus more on making a pretty spread versus pulling a couple of stickers here and there and not really feeling cohesive. There's nothing like a spread that brings you joy, makes you feel like you've done a good job on your design to make you kind of come back to your planner, which is the whole reason we're doing this, right? Like it's a creative outlet but we're doing it in a planner so that we actually can get some function out of it as well and stay organized in our lives. It's both things and that's the awesomeness of it, but also you need to gear that towards your own satisfaction and your own joy. So as long as you're happy with your spread, that's all that matters. So these are just tips to bring you closer to happiness if you're not already. So we talked about functional versus decorative. There's also white space. Some planners really like a lot of white space, so very minimal and having a lot of empty space, which is great. I love white space too. Um, as a designer, it really can help bring your eye where you want it to go on a spread. There's also the opposite. There are ones who fill the spread to its fullest, like fill every little gap with something, you know, a doodle or a quote or, you know, a little arrow or something in it. That can be so cute too. I mean, I've seen both and I think you, either way, both are really great ways to do it if you make it work for you. I personally walk the line between the two. I really like to have a lot of decor, but I also need it to be functional. So I'm always including functional items in my decor. And I also like to have a little white space just to kind of give the eye a little rest on each day. So like I said, I kind of walk the line on most of my spreads, but I've seen it uh, heavy on the decor or heavy on the fill and light on the fill. And all three ways I think can be done very well. Okay, so that's gearing you towards how much stickers you need. So if you like it one way or the other, make sure that you're pulling your stickers related to how much or how little you need. And then finally, we should talk about organizing your layout. This is where wax paper really comes into play if you don't really have a firm grasp on a weekly layout that you, you know, are going to do repetitively um, or you can kind of mentalize it. If you want to have more uh, freedom to figure it out as you go, wax paper is super great for that. Some things to think about as you're organizing your layout is what is driving the spread is it function or is it design? So if you need a very functional spread, don't stick a big flower in the middle of where you need space for a to-do list. That will bug you all week. It will, it will mess you up. And so you need to be mindful of, okay, how am I gonna use the spread this week? And then think about that as you are laying your stickers out on your page. So if it's more functional, you want to make sure that, you know, maybe you want all your checklists all on one side because you're going to have it divided visually for yourself. Like everything on the left column is going to be for work and everything in the middle column is going to be for home. And then, you know, far right is going to be my kids or whatever. If you need that kind of structure where you're looking in the same spot every day, be sure you're designing for that. Like I said earlier, if you need a large like weekly to-do list and then everything else on the day is just kind of call outs here and there, then make sure that you have a space for your long weekly to-do list on your layout. So just make sure that as you're organizing your spread, you're keeping in mind your own style and how you like the spread to look. Also, there's ideas for different organization I have a video specifically geared towards this called, um, you know, 10 layouts for horizontal planners, but I also have one for vertical and even monthly spreads. So if you need some ideas for how to mix things up a little bit, but kind of still keep it functional, some different decor, that's a great place to start if you don't really know where to start. But if you have a really great idea in mind, like how you want your layout to be, just make sure that, okay, you are designing for that layout. So if you really want everything straddling the spine, uh, all the decor that you're going to be using, say it's like a floral decor and you want it all along the spine of your spread, make sure that you are designing that way 
and not putting flowers, you know, up in the corners and stuff so that it detracts from your main layout. You want to be thinking geared towards the design and then if you feel like you need more work outside of that, but gear your organization towards your main design starting out. Also, you want to kind of keep in mind about color. Do you want your colors clumped together? If you're doing a specific theme like a rainbow theme, you're going to want your colors to be kind of clumped each day. So all the red and then the orange and then the yellow. But maybe you are doing a theme kind of like you see me here doing where you want a little bit of purple and teal uh, spread around all over the spread. Make sure that you're doing that as you're organizing your spread using the tools that you have and spreading out that color. You could do it also with clumps in the corners or whatever. You can do it however you want, but just be mindful of that as you are organizing your spread. And then finally, just looking at the overall balance of the spread and the space. So when you start filling in all your stickers, does it feel heavy in one side? So like, do you have too, too much black on one side? So that's all you see when you open the spread is like all the black. Or um, do you have a lot of stickers in this corner and then like hardly any over at the bottom? It, you can do that purposefully sometimes, but sometimes that's not what you're wanting. So you want to look at your spread and say, is it balanced the way I intended it to be? And if not, try moving things around, try shifting things. Which is what you're seeing me do here. I'm trying things to see how it feels. And I even moved quite a few things around trying to incorporate that quote that I just cut up because as one cohesive piece, it was drawing too much attention. So my solution to that was to cut it up and then I'm working with it like that. So there are different ways to work through your spread and figure out what works and don't be afraid to try things, cut things, get rid of things. Sometimes, you know, it's just not working. You keep wanting to put it in there, but it's not working. I've had a few spreads like that. Sometimes it's just better to let it go and move on. So that said, think about the balance of your spread and the way you're using your space. How does it feel to you as you look at it and um, go from there. So these are all kind of design related tips for your spread and pre-planning. You might not need to go as robust as you see me doing with so many stickers. Sometimes I keep my spreads light and airy and sometimes I go whole hog with all of the stickers and use all the stickers. So it's good to mix things up too and try new things. You never know what you're going to like or what's your style until you try it. If you're still figuring out how to go about starting a spread each week, I suggest you start small, but you know, build up to it, try things, um, take some time, be creative, and figure out what works best for you. So that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if there are any tips that I didn't share here that you guys have for other planner babes, if you, you know, are got your whole layout down and you already know like how you like to do things, please share in the comments. This is just the way that I do it and I know that that helps people to see how one person does it, but there's always something new to learn, always, you know, different ideas from different people. It, it really helps everybody in the long run to share and, um, you know, we all kind of grow and learn from each other. So. Please include those in the comments below if you do have any tips or any insight outside of what I've discussed in this video to help um, each other out in the planet community. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. Go ahead and leave me a comment if you'd like to get in touch. And think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and we'll see you next time. Bye!